Hello. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, this is our talk, Iron Cube, Bring Two Worlds Together. Uh, I'm Yuri Gregor de Melo Ferreira, Senior Software Engineer at Red Hat, current Iron PTL, and also a Metal Tree contributor. And my name is Dimitri. I'm principal software engineer at Red Hat, and I'm a long term, means eight years, contributor to Ironic and contributor to MetalCubed from its very beginning. So, what we will discuss today, uh, we'll give an overview about the projects, also talk about the integration challenges and architectural challenges, and also perception challenges, and uh, conclusion, and we will open to questions. So, overview. Uh, Ironic is the open source project that we have to fully manage bare metal deployment, and it's under OpenStack. Uh, Kubernetes, the system for automating deployments and scaling in containerized infrastructure. And then we have Metal Tree, that is the bare metal provision that we have for Kubernetes. It's part of the CNCF project. So, how they would work together? Like, we have Ironic that has an API to manage bare metal in the infrastructure, and it's an imperative API. And then you would have Metal Tree that uses Kubernetes, and then Kubernetes API for managing bare metal hosts in a declarative way. Basically, you have Ironic API running, and the Kubernetes API would talk with the Ironic API in the end. But it's not only this. This would be what we have in a metal tree environment, basically. You have the Kubernetes API, and you would define the, you would create a CR for the bare metal host definition with all the information that you have and state where that you want for that bare metal host. Uh, there's the bare metal operator that would take care to talk with the Ironic pod and then request to the Ironic API the creation of the node, and if everything's go well, in the end, you would have your bare metal machine deployed. Our reaction to all of this when we start working, it was something like, what? <laughs> Is that going to work? <laughs> so some of the integration challenges that we have while working in both projects. First one would be authentication. In the Ironic world, we, the type of authentications that are supported are related to Keystone and the, the agent service for OpenStack, and also we have the no auth mode in the beginning. So with only these two, when the product started the metal tree, uh, we only want to use Ironic. People don't want other dependencies related to OpenStack. We only need Ironic for bare metal deployment, so let's only use that. So no auth can really be used in production, not really security reasons and so on. So how we handle that? We went for our solution, creating an HTTP basic authentication support in OpenStack, and it's available in the Keystone Alf and also in OpenStack SDK. And basically, the lessons we learned from that is that we took for granted that all our use case for authentication, it would be covered using Keystone and also no Alf. But in a completely new world, now we have HTTP basic for, to solve our problems. Uh, verify steps, it's a new feature that we included in Ironic in the last cycle. What are they? They is, is a new mechanism that you can have in Ironic when you are creating a node in the enroll and enroll the node and you want to move for manageable. And basically you want to run some press steps to verify a few things on your machine that everything is working before you try to really deploy that machine. So you can run some predefined actions that you create a verify step, and you should be able to run and verify if your host is working well or not. Normally, why would it be important? We have cases for unresponsive BMCs, like it's frozen and you can't request anything. So that would be a case that you want to make sure like your BMC is able to receive all the requests and answer correctly. And maybe in the future, a few things that can come up is check for support for a few features. For example, virtual media support, some hardwares have, some others don't. 
So maybe someone will create a verify step that will check for virtual media support before you are trying to deploy a node. And, oh, I want to use virtual media. Well, your node doesn't support, so you won't go through the deployment and only see a failure there. The lessons we learned from that, basically, we will be helping operators to automate uh, a few challenges that they have in their setup related to the unresponsive BMC, and it would make their life easier because also in the context for Kubernetes, like you really don't have the operator looking at the hardware and what is happening is just the Kubernetes operator taking care of everything. So then a few use cases that show up, uh, it was related to metrics. Uh, Exposed hardware for monitoring, it's important for a few use cases in production, like you want to monitor how is the fan speed, the temperature of the, your machine. And then we created the Iron Prometheus exporter. And normally in Kubernetes, you have something that the metrics that you expose, you can integrate to Prometheus. So that was our use case at the beginning. And then we created this new project, the Iron Prometheus exporter. And basically, it's possible to collect metrics from IPMI and Redfish and provide to Prometheus and be available in a cluster. Also, while working in the creation for the Iron Prometheus exported, we noticed that the different type of BMCs, depending on the hardware vendor, they will expose different type of metrics also. They not always show the same metrics. And also, we'll have different hardware metrics based on the driver you are using. For example, if you are using IPMI or Redfish. The most interesting case for integration challenge that we have, I would say, it was related to the Redfish virtual media support. Uh, it should just work, right? Basically. Uh, Redfish is defined by the, the MTF, so it's a standard, so people should just try to follow the standard and everything would work perfectly. Not in the hardware world. Uh, we start to see a lot of problems uh, with different type of machines, and basically the solution that we had to go with Redfish Virtual Media in the end, like we need to really check if the support for each hardware is working because sometimes they can just have a different URL to provide the response for virtual media. Sometimes they will be asking for new parameters that are not really required by the standard. So it would make things difficult when you try to deploy virtual media in many different types of hardware. And the solution that we went through, like we had a few checks in Ironic for each type of hardware that has a specific problem, like if you need a specific parameter, you will try to add. If it's not, we just go with the normal path. And also, during that, uh, virtual media can work, but sometimes, okay, the virtual media is working, you can check that the system is there and it's responding to the request that you do. But when you try to deploy, some issues can occur, and normally they would be related to firmware versions, like the current firmware versions that you have in your machine is not really working well for virtual media, so probably you need to upgrade your firmware version in the end to have it working. And like I said, different carries that can occur because you need to pass a specific parameter in the end to have it working for that. Uh, another Redfish case that really highlights uh, the value of collaboration between communities and OpenStack communities and all the members of both communities is the case of uh, Redfish eTags. Um, so for those who don't know, eTags are small checksum-like pieces of information and a, and a HTTP server will return with the resource so that when you update the resource, you can provide it again and the server will check that the resource you're updating was not updated in between. Great idea. Unfortunately, not everyone implements that. And DMTF, the standard body behind Redfish, has a bit of a creative um, implementation of eTags, put it mildly, um, which then ends up in some hardware supporting no eTags. Some hardware supporting eTags, but optionally. 
some hardware uh, having mandatory usage of ETAC. So if it returns ETAC to you, you have to do that. And the most wonderful part, some hardware mandates uh, so-called weak ETACs. If you read the HTTP standard, they cannot be mandatory because actually a server must return an error if you provided a weak ETAC. But it's mandatory in Redfish. It can be mandatory in Redfish and some hardware actually had it mandatory. The story started with somebody uh, just coming to RC asking about, I think, Lenovo hardware. Then it continues with wonderful people from CERN. And um, then it ended up in our metal cubed world. And all the three parties could actually figure out a combination of magic in our code that makes it work for all hardware. Without this, without this collaboration, we'll probably be stuck uh, updating and updating and updating things ever and ever again. On this positive note, I want to talk about uh, architectural challenges of bringing the two words together, um, starting with a story about RPC. Uh, OpenStack, as you know, uses RabbitMQ. We all love it. No. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> so um, we all love it, but um, uh, in the Kubernetes world, we really wanted to have this ironic appliance small and tiny and not maintain this wonderful uh, piece of code written in Erlang. Um, we developed uh, JSON RPC uh, support in Ironic. So now Ironic can uh, use uh, just very simple RPC solution instead of RabbitMQ. And that's not only available for Kubernetes, of course. Uh, Bifrost benefits from that. We're going to talk about Bifrost later today. Come there. Um, so problem solved. Well, when you start thinking about architectures, you also start thinking about how you can go one step further. And a small application actually does not need an RPC, which is a fresh thought maybe for an OpenStack context. So we added a mode in Ironic which combines API and conductor executables in one binary. You cannot say binary about Python, right? Um, and JSON RPC is now completely optional, both in MetalCubed and in Bifrost context. So again, some rethinking of architectures uh, that was uh, caused, sorry, I'll go back a second. The rethinking of architecture that caused by researching this Kubernetes use case uh, led not only to a better solution in Kubernetes world, but also more options for operators inside OpenStack. Uh, on a similar vein, um, we did not really want to have a separate database because now that we don't have an API, API and conductor separate, why do we need really MariaDB? The thing is about Kubernetes, in uh, MetaCubed, Kubernetes is the uh, authority. So bare metal host custom resources are what de define what happens with the nodes. Ironic uh, in this case is a s an, ut an utility and its database is pretty much, you can say, a cache. Uh, it's ephemeral, uh, it's rebuilt. Every time you start an uh, Ironic pod, bare metal operator rebuilds the database by either redoing some operations with the nodes or adopting them, which is uh, ironic process for taking already deployed nodes and just register them. Um, we ended up, what we ended up doing is improving SQLite support and using SQLite as a small and a lightweight uh, local database for our new combined uh, ironic process. And the lesson from all this, as I said, uh, it's actually very useful to challenge common technologies. We get used to things, we get used to RabbitMQ, even if it's a software. <laughs> we get, get used to MariaDB as a solution. Um, trying to apply common technologies in a new world actually leads to some rethinking to new decisions, yeah, new to use new use cases. That was actually very helpful for us. And uh, to balance out, I want to tell an opposite story. Um, uh, an OpenShift, and I'm working on OpenShift, we needed to support the custom installation CDs for a certain layered product on top of OpenShift. I won't go into details. Yeah, we can do that. Um, we had actually been long talking about a modern operation in Ironic for unrelated reasons that just boots some code and code is done. It was driven by HPC community who just wanted to have some simulation on a, a completely ephemeral instance to just, and I saw with some tools, you boot it, uh, you run simulation for a day, you uh, shoot it down. So yeah, we can reuse that, right? Uh, we, uh, this product disabled inspection in Ironic, they disabled cleaning in Ironic, they started using this so-called RAM disk deploy interface for their purposes, and yeah, problem solved. Well. Um, 
The lack of integration between this so-called life ISO flow, which is a feature in bare operator, by the way, we didn't remove it, and the normal ironic flow uh, became a problem quite quickly. So the product which is built on top of OpenShift, which is built on top of MetaCubed, uh, had to actually simulate inspection. Uh, firmware settings, in, which is a great feature in Ironic, was not working because it relied on the normal flow. Deployment status was weird. So Ironic and thus, thus bare metal operator reported it done when it was just uh, boot the CD. We haven't even made sure the CD is actually booted. Oops. Um, so we are now get, uh, getting it back. We are making, uh, we have extended the custom deploy me uh, step mechanism in Ironic to be able to accommodate what they want to do. Instead of, you know, going completely different path, we are making it possible uh, for them to just plug into the normal deployment process with their code. So replace what Ironic does with the image writing you call, say, with what they need to do, but not replacing everything else. So a lesson here, yes, uh, you can change a lot based on ch uh, new challenges, but you're gonna also, you, there's still some architectural work to be done. So uh, it's, it's good to revelate what you're doing, but it's also good to not jump into, you know, completely new solutions, uh, even for new problems. And to finish it up on some political notes, <laughs> I'm gonna talk about perception challenges. Uh, first, the first thing we, we did when we say, okay, we do it with Ironic, but we don't want to install OpenStack. Um, there is a lot of misunderstanding that uh, using a part of OpenStack doesn't mean installing the whole OpenStack. Um, we have successfully, I think, for this uh, perception changes in uh, challenge in MetaCubed world. I would love it to be more a, a wider understanding also in the OpenStack community, open infra community, Kubernetes community. Yes, I would love to see a standalone Nova. It may sound crazy, but why not? It's, it's just a convenient API to run your virtual machines. That would be great. Um, my biggest lesson for that is I, uh, open infra probably should uh, concentrate more on uh, making small bits reusable rather than, like one monolithic product is also good, but reusable small bits is what I would love to see. And I think we could have a good example of that in Ironic and Cinder in its application, Kubernetes Cinder, yeah, shout out to them. Um, wow, well, why is written in Python instead of Go? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, it's, it's interesting. In, in, in the container world, you would probably don't want to see like a single technology mindset because containers is all about bridging stuff uh, through a common interface. Um, I think we did pretty well. There was some uh, educating of people going on. Uh, and so far, any attempts to rewrite Ironic ended up as people coming back and say, you know, it's actually hard. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, that, then there is a real thing, Python projects are harder to distribute than, for example, something written in Go. In Go, you have one binary, you put it in a container or just start it, that's it. Um, a big shout out to RDO people, we are using your packages, if you're here, um, to build our containers. That's another case of great collaboration between our community and MetaCube community and a part of open infra big community. Uh, so the existence of RDO enables us to overcome this problem with distribution of uh, Python projects. But also, uh, it's always useful, uh, people, especially when dealing with containers, people tend to forget about development. Uh, keep an ability to in install stuff from source. Your developers will say thank you. Uh, building, when you're testing something, an ability to build from source by passing packages, it's uh, a great thing, and uh, I want to see more of that. And yeah, on the topic of rewriting, uh, I, I heard the thing, but if you found a separate Redfish and virtual media, we can probably just, you know, have a small goal thing. It's just a you know, small one. Um, go back to the slide about Redfish compatibility first. Hardware is about subtle behaviors. That's uh, a thing you only understand after working several years in Ironic. It's less about, okay, there is a 2,000 pages of UFI standard and just, you know, Read it and mm. follow that. Uh, follow that. And then uh, <laughs> yeah. Redfish standard is, I, I think, also like hundreds of thousands of pages. Yeah. It's, it's about subtle changes. It's about gaining experience and sharing this experience. So, um, Ironic has proved over, over again to be a mature and usable and stable and feature rich foundation. 
I, I would love this experience, I would love the same situation to happen in other open infra projects that experience it, Nova, 12 years of experience and, you know, shared across infrastructures, across uh, projects, um, instead of, you know, building silos. I think we should really avoid building silos and break the walls and share experience and build foundations that can be reused over and over again. To conclude that, essentially to reiterate what we just said, uh, we need more integration. I just talked about, a lot about it. Uh, we, need to re we need to challenge our assumptions, reevaluate them every now and then, uh, check our established practices for sanity so that people don't hate RabbitMQ. Um, standards are important, but how we implement them is even more important. Experience with implementations is still a great asset that you cannot easily replace by a people just reading a PDF. And OpenStack alive. OpenStack is ready for new challenges. It's thriving. So, yay, keep working. That's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Uh, any questions? Uh, if you have you questions, the there's microphone? a mic there. Yeah. If it's too far, just shout and we will repeat. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll also shout. So. <laughs> <laughs> so can you hear me? I guess so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was uh, really interested in you, what you mentioned about the databases and so forth. So you were basically did some SQL or MariaDB, whatever you want to call it, to see uh, SQLite. So, but you already have, you know, if you are integrating with MetalCube, you got etcd. Why don't you just integrate with etcd and fuck off SQLite? Um, there are a few reasons for that. Uh, it is, first, there are some architecture problems in actually getting access to the etcd there, but that's, that's not interesting. Um, it's, it applies not very well to patterns that Ironica are using. Um, we actually, it's, it is developed to be a relation with the database. We use some things. So, there are a few complex queries, a few things where you rely on transactions the way your relation database do that. And also what I was told, ETCD is not exactly fast. I mean, it's fast when you use it the way you should be using it. And Kubernetes actually goes to great extents to use ETCD properly. There is like, it uses notifications, for example, which is mm -hmm. not something we do as SQL Alchemy, right? We don't get notified about objects. Okay. Um, so it may be one day, uh, but that's definitely not a priority now. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, one question about your experience with Redfish and all the subtle differences between the hardware manufacturers. Um, I encountered the same. I'm pretty sure there's like a secret challenge between the hardware manufacturers to implement Redfish and made it, made, just make it make it not adhere to the standard at different points. Um, did you have a look into open BMC to like remove the crappy vendor specific BMC implementation and go for the nice shiny open source stuff? Uh, yeah, absolutely, but um, we are on the other end of that. So we would love the vendors, dear vendors, please use one implementation of everything. That being said, I don't think it's something that's gonna happen. Yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> So we have to accommodate that because we are the client. We are the clients from BMC perspective. So we cannot just go to big names and tell them, you know, stop. Um, uh, you know, uh, but the question was more into the direction: Have you tried actually flashing open BMC and replacing the vendor's BMC? Because I have done that to at least a few servers for not my professional, but for the more hobby projects, because it brought me great relief. Because then I at least had like always the same errors and not 20 different kinds of errors. Right, so um, OpenBSC supports IP mine, they support Redfish. Yes, that's And what. I know people used at least the IP mine one with Ironic. Uh, we have not done that, we I think. Yeah, we haven't really done that. Okay. Because it won't solve our problem. Our problem is customers come and say, I have yeah. the server model, this, this, and that, with firmware version that, and it doesn't and work with your work. code. We need to make it work. Yeah, and, and, and if you tell your customer to just, just flash another BMC, they will probably show you the door right away. Not something that we can really yeah. do, I would say. That will, for many cases, it will invalidate the support contract. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay, thanks. Say again? Do it as verify step. Yeah, the suggestion was to use a verify step to flash new firmware. <laughs> I would totally do that in my last week in Red Hat. 
<laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you, folks. Uh, you can find us in between the breaks. We're going to have another session at Bifrost in Ironic today, a more beginner one. So uh, come learn about standalone Ironic and how we use it and see a nice demo. It's around 2 p.m., I think, in the back. Yeah. And yeah, uh, find us for any questions. Thank you. Yeah, if you have more questions, feel free to reach out.